And so to be concurrent with yourself, you might be working on a feature and then in the middle of it, like you're halfway through writing the code for it, someone finds a bug in production and you need to pause your work on that feature development, even though you're halfway done. Mm -hmm. You need to go and you need to fix the bug in production to get the model refreshing again. And that might require some changes in order to fix whatever bug has arisen. And so immediately at that point, even though you're one person, you've got a feature in flight that you've stopped, you're not done with, but it, you've done some work. That's one version. You've got the version in production, and then you've got the version that you need to edit based on what's in production to fix whatever bug has arisen. Then you push the change to fix the bug. Now you've got a different version in production than where you started from when you started on your feature. But you go back to your feature and you finish the work on that. And then you want to get that into production as well. And so concurrent development, I think, is really what we need to think about when we're thinking about source control. And then we want to talk about the things that are necessary to support that concurrent development, some of the implications of it, and also tooling that goes along with and helps it. Part of being able to do concurrent development depends on, can I build small pieces of a single larger project, right? So I think there's a dependency there that we didn't really have in the very beginning.